Listen to it, Fizz. First aid for the relief from headache, Alka-Seltzer. From acid indigestion, Alka-Seltzer. From cold discomfort, Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer presents the Quiz Kids. And the chief quizzer himself, Pat Conley. everyone, and welcome to another Alka-Seltzer question session with the Quiz Kids. This is going to be a very special occasion, because representatives of Lions International are challenging our young Quiz Kids this afternoon. It's a very distinguished group, and I want you to meet them. So, Quiz Kids, let's show these roaring lions how we answer roll call. Sally Ann? I'm Sally Ann Wilhelm. I'm 12 years old. I'm in the seventh grade at Central Junior High School in Elkhart, Indiana. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 15 years old, and I'm a sophomore at Main Township High School in Park Ridge, Illinois. Wendy? I'm Wendy Stacking. I'm five years old, and I go to kindergarten at Kids School in Chicago, Illinois. (laughs) All right. Naomi? I'm Naomi Cooks. I'm 12 years old, and in the 8A at Grover Cleveland School, Chicago. And Harvey? I'm Harvey Dutch. I'm seven years old. I go to Deepert School, and I'm in grade 3B. All right. That's the way it's done. So, Lions, let's hear from you. First, from Memphis, Tennessee, we have the past international president of Lions International and attorney at law, Mr. Pierce. It's Clifford D. Pierce, too old to give my age, from the land of cotton and <laughs> tourists. <laughs> from Camden, New Jersey, first vice president of this great organization, Mr. Nutter. My name is Harold Nutter from Camden, New Jersey. I'm in the mortgage business. I tried to bribe Pat into getting a copy of the questions, but was not successful. (laughs) From Maywood, Illinois, the second vice president, Mr. Albert. I'm Edgar M. Albert. I work hard and earn an honest living selling real estate. (laughs) From Detroit, Michigan, third vice president, Mr. Dodge. S.A. Dodge from Detroit, Michigan, manufacturer of chemicals. And from Chicago, Illinois, the Director General of Lions International, Mr. Keaton. My name is R. Roy Keaton. I'm 43 years of age. I've lost my hair prematurely, but I still have my natural teeth. And And also from Chicago, the sixth representative of Lions International, Mr. Kelly. My name is Joseph William Kelly. I am a member of the Central Lions Club here in Chicago. I was born in Crawfordsville, Indiana, when I was very young. (laughs) And I went through Wabash College in the front door and out the back. (laughs) I uh, would like to uh, add that they pulled a switch on me today inasmuch as I'm a member of the Lions Club and made me a contestant along with my uh, fellow uh, brother Lions here. <laughs> and uh, young Patrick Conlon is going to be the old chief quizzer, or I should say the young chief quizzer himself today. So, Pat, now you can take over and lots of luck to you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. And to us. <laughs> right. Here's your first question from Carol Urbage of Sacramento, California. What yellow flower you dig up and throw out describes six men, all brave, all stout. The hands went up pretty fast there. I should say one hand did, Naomi. Oh, I think that would be a dandelion. A dandelion. We have six dandelions here today. me for interrupting, but uh, the lions here didn't know that they were supposed to hold up their hands. Oh, they did. So they, oh, they just well, asked I'll me. I'll explain that to them. Uh, lions, be sure and hold up their hands now when you want to be called on. Yeah, we knew you knew the answer, it's just hands. that you <laughs> forgot. <clears throat> the next question from the Alka-Seltzer question box is from Frank Weiner of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If you heard of a bird that courted its mate in the following manner, what bird would it be? First... If you heard of a bird that had air sacs on his chest, which he inflated and collapsed to attract his mate, and the hands went up pretty fast, or Harvey? Sage, that would be the sage grouse, I believe. When it's in mating season, it, it blows up these windbags and lets them down with a plop that could be heard a mile away. <laughs> That's right. Fine. <laughs> All right, quiz kids and lions, see what you can do with the second part. If you heard of a bird that presented his mate with such a big chest, he could hardly walk. Naomi? Wouldn't it be a powder pigeon? Well, no. 
Now we're thinking of a different kind of a bird. Uh, if you heard of a bird that presented his mate with such a big chest that he could hardly walk. No hands up on this. Well, uh, Mr. Keaton, uh, a little bird tells me that your first gift to your fiancé was a cedar chest. Wasn't it? That's right. <laughs> and uh, it was so big that you could hardly walk, wasn't it? I didn't identify that with a bird. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, that was Mr. Keaton. And, uh... <laughs> Mr. Keaton, I think uh, maybe you're going to hear from about this when you get home. <clears throat> well, Mrs. Sarah Mann of Chicago says that if famous poets had written the nursery rhyme, Mary Had a Little Lamb, they would have written it in their particular styles. You are to identify the author and compositions from which it is copied. Here's the first part. Should Mary's white lamb be forgot and never brought to mind? Lonnie? Well, that's uh, copied after all Lang Syne. I and believe that's Robert Burns. Robert Burns, that's right. And uh, here's our second part. The lamb was here, the lamb was there, the lamb was all around. Lonnie? Well, that would be Samuel Taylor Coleridge in, from a passage in The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Oh, uh, what is that stanza? Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. That's right. And uh, here's the last one. Hearken, my brethren, and ye shall hear of Mary's little lamby, dear. <laughs> All right, uh, Naomi. Well, I think that was Henry Wadsworth Longfellow from uh, The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Uh, what's the real name of that, Lonnie? Paul Revere's right. Paul Revere's right. That's right. Pat, uh, pardon me. I'd, I'd like to call time out uh, All right. for uh, a couple of seconds. Fellas, you know, you got permission to put your hands up a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So let's... All right, proceed, uh, All right. Wizard. I'm uh, sure the lions were just meditating on those questions there. You say that again. <laughs> the next question is from Louise Manning of Atlanta, Georgia. Suppose you're serenading your best girl and use the song Howard Peterson is going to play on the organ. You are to identify the song you would be singing and give us a sample of it. Here's the first one. Uh, Mr. Albert... I had a dream, dear. That's right. It's fine. And here's the second part. Wait a minute. Uh, do, uh, is he going to sing? Uh, oh, that's other? right. Gee, I almost <laughs> forgot about that. We wouldn't want to miss this, that. Yeah, Mr. this Albert. we want to hear. <laughs> I had a dream, dear. You had one, too. <laughs> See, my Four lions got That's in on right. that. That's right. That's wonderful. <laughs> Here's our second part. Oh, the hands went up very fast there. Little Wendy? Um, ain't she sweet? All right, Wendy, can you sing that for us? Ain't she sweet? A walking down the street. Now I ask you very confidentially, ain't she sweet? <laughs> And uh, here's our last one. Uh, Mr. Keaton. You can't stop me from loving you. That's right. Now, uh, can, uh, we can't stop you from singing either. So, uh, <laughs> we'd love to hear you. You can put beans in my coffee. You can put flit in my stew. You can be as aloof as the Chrysler roof. But you can't stop me from loving you. <laughs> Here. Wait a minute, what's the matter, Pat? Can't you find the next card? Well, yes, Mr. Kelly, but it just says, discuss the weather. Oh, well, this winter weather we're having over so much of the country is really something to talk about. Oh, yes, and you know, friends, it can pay us all to watch out for colds. That's right, Joe. A cold can make you feel pretty miserable, friends. So be wise and keep plenty of Alka-Seltzer on hand during the cold-catching season. And when you feel a cold coming on, start taking Alka-Seltzer. Just follow the directions that are there in the Alka-Seltzer package. And, of course, take care of yourself and watch your diet. You'll like the way Alka-Seltzer helps you feel better. The way it helps that miserable, feverish, ache-in-every-bone feeling that you usually have with a cold. And use Alka-Seltzer as a gargle, too. 
It's easy. Just drop a couple of Alka-Seltzer tablets in a quarter glass of warm water and gargle with this solution. It certainly eases the raspy, sore throat that often accompanies a cold. So remember, when you take cold, take Alka-Seltzer. Yes, Alka-Seltzer can be worth its weight in gold when you're suffering with a cold. You bet, folks. Well, all right, Patrick, let's get on with this Lions International versus Quiz Kids competition. Right you are, Mr. Kelly. For this question, from Mary Hammerstein of Cincinnati, Ohio, you are to suppose that opera lyrics were written in the lingo of gangsters. I will read a so-called line from an opera, and you are to tell who is talking to whom. Here's the first one. Look, wise guy, your racket is killing bulls. Stick to it, see? And quit giving my babe the glad hand. All right, Lonnie. Well, that would be from Carmen by Bizet. And, and uh, uh, Mick Aylard would be talking to Escamillo. No, no, uh, Naomi? Well, I think it would be Don Jose talking to Escamillo. That's right. Now, you lions must give a tough answer that Escamillo would reply to Jose. I'm giving you cards that contain two replies, but you are to pick one that is in keeping with what really happened in the story... And give it in real gangster reading, too. Any hands up on this? You got a chance to look at you? All right, Mr. Kelly. <clears throat> oh, yeah, well, get this. The skirt likes me. See? She's my dame. Get it? Aha! <laughs> right Don't next... tell me I got the right one. Thanks. You did get the right oh, one, fine. Mr. Kelly. That's right. Now try this next opera. Who was talking to whom? <laughs> You gotta scram, beautiful. This is no place for a lady. They're gonna seal me up alive in this hole. Sally Ann? Well, that was from Aida when uh, Adonis was uh, locked in the tomb and Aida was in the tomb, too. That's right. Uh, now you lions are to reply what Aida might have said. So pick the correct answer from the cards passed out. Mr. Albert. Babe, don't hand me that stuff. I'm crazy about you. I'm sticking, see? That's right. <laughs> Here's a sports question from Roy Henderson of Memphis, Tennessee. Whose record is associated with these numbers in sports? Get two of three. First, point four two zero. Oh. Uh, Lonnie. Well, that would be a batting average. I believe that's George says, or no, Rogers Hornsby who no. has the all. No, it is a batting average, but uh, who is it now? Any other hands on this? <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Kelly. Uh, could it be uh, Ty Cobb? That's right. It could be Ty Cobb, and Lonnie was partly right because it could have been George Sisler, too. Uh, they both hold the American League uh, record for batting in a single season with 420. <laughs> All right, see what you can do with this next part. Two minutes, one and two-fifths second. Two minutes, one and... Mr. Kelly. Will you please repeat that? Pat? All right, I will. Two minutes, one and two-fifths se second. Now, what record uh, would you associate with that? All right, Lonnie? Well, I'm quite sure that's the mark for the the fastest time that the Kentucky Derby was ever run. That's and, right. And you, uh, but I'm not sure of the horse. Let's see. Anybody I clear us think up it might have been Citation. Citation? No. No, wait a Citation. Ponder? Ponder? No. no. Uh, you're away. right about the race. Uh, Mr. Keaton. Whirl away? Whirl away. That's right. <laughs> the last part, and it's pretty tough. Nineteen feet, two and a half inches. Mr. Albert. That's my broad jump record. That's right. Oh. <laughs> that was really some record. Well, since the quiz kids are tangling with the lions today, Mrs. Catherine Brown of Appleton, Wisconsin, wants to see uh, whether the contestants can spot the people in the Bible who tangled with some lions. First... Who killed a lion while on the way to see a young lady? All right, Mr. Albert. Samson. Samson, that's right. And here's the second part. Who, through no fault of his own, spent the night with a bunch of lions? Oh, the hands went up mighty fast there. Oh, uh, Sally Ann. Well, that was Daniel in the lion's den. That's right. Fine. And uh, here's your next question. It's from uh, Dr. Henrietta Komitzer of Washington, D.C., who is devoting her life to the education of the blind. She has told us of a wonderful project carried on by the United States government of supplying talking books free of charge to any blind person who requests them. 
The government has complete books recorded on long playing records, and they are circulated to state libraries for the blind and are mailed out from there. They are for the use of the blind only, and any blind person who is interested can obtain further information by writing to the Library of Congress, Division for the Blind, Washington, D.C. For this question, we are going to re represent records taken from three different books to give you a sample of the variety of books made available, and you contestants must try to identify two of them. Here's the first one. I am well aware that I'm the humblest person going, said Uriah Heap modestly. And my mother is likewise a very humble person. And we live in an humble abode. Naomi? Well, that was from David Copperfield by Charles That's Dickens. right. That was Uriah Heap. All right, here's the next one. I really tried to like chickens, but I couldn't get close to the hen, either physically or spiritually. And by the end of the second spring, I hated everything about the chicken but the egg. Oh, Mr. Kelly. The egg and I? That's right. I'll bet you a homemade cookie you're right, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let's try this third one. A very good case may be made that California, next to New York is the most important state in the Union, which is one reason why I begin with it. It is, for instance, the one above all others that could best exist alone. Yep, so John Gunther's Inside That's USA. That's right, Inside USA. I know that one of the projects you lions are interested in is helping the blind. And Mr. Keaton, I wonder whether you could tell us about some of your other worthwhile projects. Yes, Pat. It just occurred to me how the name of this popular radio program sponsored by the Miles Laboratories of Elkhart, Indiana, and the activities of our Lions Clubs have so much in common. Your program is the Quiz Kids. It's a quiz program. Your participants are constantly seeking the right answers and solutions to multiple questions and problems. I like to think of our Lions Clubs as quiz men, grown-up quiz kids who ask literally thousands of questions daily about what they can do and what should do to improve the lot of humanity. Asking about every conceivable, worthwhile community project, from all phases of blind work to the building of hospitals. In fact, <clears throat> in fact, our international president, Herb C. Petrie, Jr. of Carriza Springs, Texas, is absent from this broadcast as he's down in Panama, dedicating a great children's hospital that was financed solely by the Strong Lions Club of that city at a cost of over a half million dollars. And Joe... And, Pat, it is the quizzing that our lines do and the results that follow that has made our association by far the largest service club organization in the world. We have over 8,300 Lions clubs in 29 major countries with a membership of 403,181 members, all ultra-anxious to find the solution that will give us a better world to live in. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Kelly, do I get to explain about the Alka-Seltzer Awards? Oh, you bet you do, Pat. You go right ahead. Well, the questions used in our program are sent in by you listeners. When a question is answered correctly, the Alka-Seltzer Award is a fine Zenith transoceanic portable radio. For example, that's what Leroy Wagner of Melrose, Massachusetts, receives for this question, if it's answered correctly. Well, let's try it and see what happens. What association, made with the following fictional characters would describe the condition of your car motor at various times. Here's the first one. Rip Van Winkle. Uh, Wendy. Um, uh, there's Rip Van Winkle was on the Catskill Mountains by, um, the Hudson River. That's right. Well, uh, what uh, was he doing there that might describe your car motor? Bonnie? Well, he was sleeping. It might be kind of snoring. Oh, snoring. Naomi? Well, he was idling. Idling. That's another one. Can we think of some more? Uh, Naomi? Well, uh, when he got, when he woke up after his 20 years sleep, he was old and rusty. That's right. And Joe, uh, Joe Kelly? Well, your motor could be missing. That's he right. Was missing. <laughs> we well, got no, in there, no, oh, boy. Very fine. Well, Here's the next part. Puss in Boots. Wendy? We have a Puss in Boots record, and, um... You do. It's... <laughs> well, uh, uh, what about the car motor now? Uh, Mr. Keaton. It's purring. Purring, that's right. That's exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> well, 
Uh, like I said, Leroy Wagner gets the dandy Zenith Transoceanic Portable that gives worldwide reception no matter where you are. Now, if you had missed, he would have had a choice between a Zenith television set and a large console Zenith radio phonograph combination. That television set is the B Zenith Buchanan, and it has everything. A new super range chassis to ensure the ultimate in performance, the sensational built-in picture magnet aerial, single knob automatic tuning, and the glare band black tube for clearer pictures. The large console radio phonograph plays all types of records and has AM and FM radio. If you would like to win one of these fine Zeniths, send in a question for our radio program. Address your questions to Quiz Kids, Box Y, Chicago 77, Illinois. All right, let's see what we can do with this next question from Mrs. Alice M. Bode of Long Island, New York. If three racehorses were entered in a race and were named Stopwatch, Shoes, and Cabbage, in what order would they finish? This is the type of a pawn or a riddle. Uh, Mr. Keaton. Well, let's see. Uh, stopwatch shoes and what's that? Cabbage. Cabbage would come in ahead. That's right. And the stopwatch comes in by second. That's right. And the shoes last. Last. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Pat, before we get into the next question, I have something to say about Christmas shopping. That certainly is a timely topic right now, isn't it? And, of course, it's lots of fun, but a day of Christmas shopping can wear you out, friends, fighting the crowds, going from store to store, trying to find exactly what you want, and by the time you get home, it sometimes happens that you ache in every muscle and your head is splitting. But your misery can be brief. Take Alka-Seltzer for relief. That's right, good old Alka-Seltzer that can have you back in the good old Christmas spirit in almost no time. I remember that, friends. Yes, whenever a tiring day brings a, on muscular aches and pains or a headache or both, take Alka-Seltzer for the fast, effective relief it can give. If you're downtown, stop in at a drugstore fountain for a glass of Alka-Seltzer. Keep Alka-Seltzer where you work, too, and always at home. Yes, where there's Alka-Seltzer, there's a way to fast relief from the discomfort of a headache and muscular aches and pains. That's Alka-Seltzer in the friendly blue and white package. Is that all you have to say, Mr. Kelly? Yes, for the moment. Pat me by. You may continue. <laughs> all right. Here's a spelling question from Mrs. Phyllis Adams of San Francisco, California. Now, it has become almost a standard saying that the accuracy of a businessman's spelling depends on the ability of his secretary. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll pretend that little five-year-old Wendy is the secretary of you business executives. I'll give her a word to spell, and if she misses it, it's up to you to spell it correctly. All right, Wendy, see whether you can spell this first one. Monotonous. M-O-N-O-T-O-N-O-U-S. That's right. And uh, how about the second one? Plausible. P-L-A-U-S-P. I P O E. That's fine. Now this last one is very tough, so I think we'll get the let the lions have first crack at it. Idiosyncrasy. Uh, Mr. Um, Pierce. I D I O S Y N C R A S Y. That's right, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> right. Well. Here's a quickie from Mary Hubble of San Francisco, California. What woman's name is spelled the same forward as backwards? There are quite a few. Mr. Keaton. Well, Hannah's one. That's right. Anna's another. Anna. And, um... Uh, Sally Ann? Eve. Eve, that's right. Uh, Mr. Kelly. Ada. Ada. Uh, Mr. Albert. My wife's name is. Her name is Anona. That's right. We have that on the card. Naomi. Uh, Aviva. Aviva. Okay. All right. Well... We all like a good, tall story now and then. So for Mrs. Adele Smith of New York, I shall give you clues that pertain to famous tall stories. You are to identify the story and finish it. In what story did men grease a griddle in a very unusual way? Uh, Naomi. Oh, well, that's from the Paul Bunyan stories. That's right. And uh, what was the name of that episode? I don't know. I think... Uh, well, that's when he greased his feet to, to uh, scoot around in it, skate around in it, uh... To fry the uh, ox. That's right. He wants to know what the name of the story is, Mr. Keaton. Paul Bunyan's... Uh... So far, so good. <laughs> yeah. The Tall Tales. Uh, no, it's Paul Bunyan's Great Flapjack Riddle. Flapjack but, uh, riddle. Right. <laughs> That's very good. I can see you're up on Paul Bunyan. <laughs> all right. In what tall story does a man lose all 
of his main crop. In what tall story does a man awani? Well, I think that's in uh, The Wizard of Oz by Baum. That's right. And uh, how did that Well, happen? it was uh, ruined by a cyclone. And in the cyclone, uh, the man's daughter got carried off to Oz. Uh, Mr. Albert, is that right? You were going to say something. I know of a story, a, a story of a man losing his main crop. It's told by one of our past presidents, and I don't think he'll object to me repeating it. Out in the eastern part of Tennessee, it's quite mountainous. There's a man out there who, uh, at the drop of a hat, uh, would curse uh, violently. And one day he was taking his only cash crop up the mountains, a load of apples, when the tailgate fell out of the, out of the wagon and all the apples scattered down the mountains. Oh. <laughs> well, he had his little grandson with him, and uh, uh, to the, uh, the, he, the man got out, and instead of beginning to curse, he started to write. The little grandson said, What are you doing, Grandpa? Why are you so quiet? He says, well, son, the way I feel, I just simply cannot express it, so I'm writing it down. <laughs> hey, Pat, that uh, question you, didn't uh, have any reference by any chance to my head. No, no, Mr. Kelly. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Right. Well, just to see how observant <laughs> you contestants are, try this question from Ruth Schulstead of Chicago, Illinois. What state has the following color scheme on its automobile license plate for 1950? Aluminum on black. Michigan. Oops, uh, Mr. Dodge. <laughs> sure, raise your hand, though. Uh, you, you were going to say Michigan? Oh, well, that bell means it's time for the judges to name the winning team. We'll give them a few seconds to total the scores. And friends, while we're waiting, here's an important message. Mothers, here's why you should give your children one-a-day brand multiple vitamins. Children to have perfect health, normal growth, strong bones and good teeth, to be alert in the schoolroom and on the playground, must get proper food and enough vitamins. Millions of children are handicapped because their mothers do not see to it that they get enough vitamins. Don't let this happen in your family. Give each member a one-a-day brand multiple vitamin every day. This will furnish their needed supply of the essential vitamins. Guard them against vitamin deficiency disease. Be sure it's one-a-day brand multiple vitamins, the kind with the big one on the blue package. Well, here are the scholars. The judges report that as a class you missed two questions today. The Lions have a score of 160, and the Quiz Kids, 190. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Quiz Kids. I knew you could do it, even with the odds against you. Six Lions against five Quiz Kids. Mr. Kelly, you should have been twins. <laughs> but you Lions tried hard, and so I think both teams deserve congratulations. But well, you bet, Pat. And I just want to say that you've done a fine job as Quiz Master this afternoon. Thank you. Just a minute, Joe. Our first vice president, Harold Nutter of Camden, New Jersey, has a very legitimate reason for wanting to get into this act at this time. <laughs> Joe, with you on our side today, I was sure we were going to win this quiz pre uh, program, contest. Uh, as a result, I brought along with me a very fine uh, little token here, a fountain pen desk set with the uh, emblem of Lions International upon it. And, Joe, uh, even though we haven't won, I guess I must give it to you because your name is engraved upon it. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. This certainly is a beautiful desk set, and I'm very, very grateful. And you know something? We're mighty happy to have you members of Lions International with us. And may you have continued success with your many worthwhile projects. Friends, the next organization to compete with the Quiz Kids will be the Benevolent Order of Elks. And next Sunday, we're going to have an all-music program featuring some very important guests. And now, Pat, it's time to dismiss our Alka-Seltzer questions. Yes, Mr. Kelly. Plan to be with us next Sunday, friends. Until then, this is Pat Conlon saying goodbye, Quiz Kids. Bye, Mr. Conlon. <laughs> Listen to the Quiz Kids coast to coast every Sunday afternoon and see and hear Alka-Seltzer's Quiz Kids television show on NBC. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. This is Bob Murphy speaking. Hear Theater Guild tonight and don't miss the big show today on NBC.